what I want to do this afternoon is I want to start a brand new series uh, that we are calling Unstoppable Faith. Unstoppable Faith. I, I want to show you today, and not just today, but over the next couple weeks, that God has given you an unstoppable faith. An unstoppable faith to be able to get through hard times, to be able to move forward, and to be able to take your next step. See, I, I want to show you that, that your faith in God will help you to get from where you are today to where God is leading you tomorrow. Your faith can guide you through the storms of life. The title to my message today is Faith is Enough. Faith is enough. In my office, I have this little decorative piece that reads this. The man who walks with God always gets to his destination. Always gets to his destination. Your faith in God, my friends, is enough to get you to your destination. I can tell you that, that my wife and I have been walking with the Lord for several years now. And in our journey of faith with God, we have seen how our faith in God is enough to get us from where we're at to where God is ultimately leading us tomorrow. We have taken many steps of faith in our journey. And the foundation, the anchor to those steps has been our faith in God. I think about when we left Houston to come back to the Rio Grande Valley to start this work that would become DTC Church. We did so in faith. See, we had no money, no members, no leaders, no building, just a heart full of faith. And when we came down here, we had no plan B. There was no like, well, in case this doesn't work out, we'll go back to this. No plan B whatsoever. It was, we're going. In fact, we didn't have much of a plan at all. We just had faith that God had called us to start this church and that he was going to work it out somehow. If you had met me when we first started, you probably wouldn't have followed me because I didn't seem like a very good leader. I mean, who starts a church with no money, no people, no plan, and no resources? I didn't have a three-year plan or a five-year plan. The reality was I didn't know how it was all going to happen. We just had faith that God was going to work it out somehow. And so we took the step of faith. We moved down here to the valley with the dream in our heart to reach people and change lives with the good news of Christ. And God has been doing that ever since. One of the things that I was also thinking about this week and is that I remember when, when, when my wife and I started dating in the early part of our relationship. Um, it was, we were about a year and a half into our relationship. And, and I knew that Anne-Marie was my wife. I knew in my heart that she was my wife. And Now, if Anne-Marie was telling the story, she would tell you that the minute she met me, she knew I was her husband. I mean, she just saw me. She said, that's, that's the one. He is my husband. <laughs> Now, she's not going to have a mic up here no more today, so I can say that. <laughs> now, but can I tell you a true story, though? My friend, my best friend, when he met Anna Marie, the first day that he met her, he said, she's the one. And I was like, no. You know, and he says, yeah, she's, I mean, like he called it. She's the one. I mean, the very first day that, that he met Anna Marie, he said that she was going to be the one. And, but I was still a very broken individual, so I couldn't see clearly how beautiful my wife was. And so I thank Jesus that he healed my heart so that I could see what he had placed before me. And there are some of you men or women here today that, that you have something very beautiful in front of you. And if you do so, have it, appreciate it. Because, you know, good people are hard to find, my friends. If you have them in front of you, hold on to it. You know, don't let your stubborn self, don't let your, your, your old self push that beautiful person that God has brought into your life. I don't know. Somebody needed to hear that. <clears throat> and so, uh, oh, yeah, so, so, so we were, we were in, in Houston. We've been dating about a year and a half, and, and I knew that, that, that I loved Anne-Marie, and I knew I, I believed that Anne-Marie was my wife. But then around the same time, I was beginning to sense 
God's leading to leave Houston and come back to the Rio Grande Valley to plant this church. And, and so I was kind of torn. I was torn because I was like, man, if I leave Houston and I haven't, you know, Emer I haven't put a ring on it, you know what I mean? I may lose Anne-Marie. Uh, but the reality was I had no money to put a ring on it. And so, and so I'm telling you, this is a faith journey. And so, so, so I remember just thinking about it. I said, man, if I leave Houston, you know, we may break up. It may not work out. You know, a long distance relationship might not work out. But then I, I drew encouragement from a, a, a passage. If you've never read it, it's in Genesis chapter 22. And it talks about how Abraham, how God told Abraham to go and sacrifice his one and only son, Isaac. Now, the powerful truth about this story is that, that Abraham and Sarah, his wife, had believed God for this son for over 25 years. They had waited over 25 years to have their son Isaac. And, and now they have their son, and God tells Abraham, Abraham, go and sacrifice the one and only son. But the Bible says this, that Abraham didn't even think twice about it. That he, he, it, he took his next step. And the Bible, in essence, says that, that Abraham had faith that God had a plan even though, he wasn't, even though he wasn't told what that plan was. He took the next step in faith. And I remember, and as you, if you read the story, you'll notice that Abraham goes up to the mountain and God already had a plan in place. He, in fact, did not have to sacrifice his son he already had a provision for Abraham. He just wanted to know if Abraham trusted him, if Abraham had faith in him. It was a test of faith. Do you know God will test your faith sometimes? And so it was almost as if God was testing my faith. Are you going to put Anne-Marie in front of me, or are you going to put me first and trust me? And so I drew en encouragement from that, that, that account. And so I remember telling Anne-Marie, Anne-Marie, I said, I'm sorry, but I got to leave you. I said, I got to go back to the valley. I know this is what I got to do. Now, I was a little fearful that, that it might not work out, but I had this faith in God that it would all work out somehow. It was about during a four-month period that we were apart from one another. I think we may have seen each other maybe once at the most two times during that period. But then about four months into it, the Lord shared a word with Anne-Marie. And the Lord shared with Anne-Marie, go to the valley and support your future husband. Now, Emery had never even really been to the valley. When somebody had once told her that they were from San Juan, she said, oh, San Juan, Puerto Rico? <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 San Juan, P-S-J-A. <laughs> and so, uh, but do you know what she did? She had been living up at, at home up until that point, and her parents expected her to live at home until she got married. But now she's telling her parents, hey, I really sense that God wants me to move and so she packs her bag and she moves in faith she takes her next step in faith to the Rio Grande Valley and within one year we are married and we start DTC Church that girl had some faith no ring on it <laughs> now in retrospect my wife and I would highly recommend that you not do both of those at the same time. Do one or the other. Don't, don't start a church and get married at the same time. But do you know that our first Sunday service uh, was with about 15 people meeting in a hotel room? And today we started church at a hotel room, but this time with at least 1,000 people and two locations. And so we've launched a second location, but can I tell you something? We've done it in faith. See, I wish I could tell you what the next step is, but honestly, I don't know what the next step is. You could really make the argument that I haven't improved very much as a leader. I still don't know what the next step is. But we have faith. And I believe that God will reveal the next step. And when he does, I'll share it with you. And then you know what we're going to do? Together, we're going to the, take the next step in faith. <laughs> Now, the reason I share all this with you, my friends, is because faith is enough. 
Faith will get you to the next step. Faith will get you from where you are to where you need to be. Faith is enough. Faith is more than enough. When you read through the Bible, you will read and you will see that God has always done it this way. God told Abraham, he says, leave your family and leave your, your, your country. And then he said to Abraham, and go and I'll show you where you're supposed to go. So he tell him, look, I'm not going to tell you the whole story. I'm just telling you to go and I'll tell you along the way. And that's the way he does it with us. He says, take the next step. See, we live in a world that says, I'll believe it when I see it. But God says, believe it, and then you'll see it. And so God says, you got to begin to walk it out. <laughs> God told Moses when they came to the barrier that was the Red Sea, he says, Moses, he said, why are you standing there? He says, lift up your staff toward the Red Sea. And so Moses lift up his, lifts up his staff, and the Red Sea parts. God told Joshua to go and take possession of the promised land. And then he said to him this. He says, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Be strong. Be courageous. And know that I'm going with you every step of the way. God told Mary that she would be with child. And Mary had faith that it would be just as God had told her. God told the early disciples to go and spread the good news. And they did so in faith. Do you know that today you and I are a part of this church? We are part of a, of a Christian church, of a Christ-centered church, because several years ago, some men took their next step in faith to carry out the work that Jesus had told them to carry out, to begin this movement that would be called the Church of Christ, Jesus Church. And you and I are a part of that because somebody walked by faith. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, that we live by faith, not by sight. We live by faith, not by sight. The greatest resistance to faith is not fear. It is our sight. Can I say that again? The greatest resistance to faith is not fear. It is our sight. You see, our sense of sight challenges our faith. But just because you can't see something doesn't mean it can't happen. See, we live in a world that functions primarily with the five senses. One of those five senses is sight. And so we're always going to see something but God is saying you have to be able to tap into the sixth sense, which is faith, to overcome what you see with your natural eyes. As some of you might know, my wife and I struggled to have a child for, for the first eight years of our marriage. And during those eight years, there were many moments when we became very sad and very discouraged in our heart. Because what we saw with our eyes was nothing was changing. There was no pregnancy. Nothing was happening. Matter of fact, we went to the doctors and, and the doctors reported to us what they saw with their sight. And their sight said, you're not going to be able to have children. You will not. It's going to be impossible for you to have children in the natural manner. But every time that we were discouraged, we would turn back to the faith that God has given us. And we would anchor ourselves upon that faith. And we would remind ourselves that we live by faith and not by sight. And many of you may know we have a five-year-old daughter who started kindergarten this week. And we were praying. <laughs> Even this week, we were praying, Lord, let her have a good week. And she had a great week. On Saturday morning, she was ready to go back to school. We said, no, Mama, you're not yet. Monday, Monday. Now, Mama had a hard time waking up, but she's having to change her schedule a little bit. No, she did great. <laughs> but Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 11, if, you, if you'll have an opportunity to go read it this week, and really throughout this series, I'm going to be talking to you a lot about what we read here in Hebrews 11. But in Hebrews 11, we read of what is sometimes called the Hall of Faith. Now, 
if you're familiar with sports, uh, you will know that, that when athletes perform well, they're often inducted into the Hall of Fame over their particular sport. And people idolize them for many years, you know, because of the great feats that they accomplished, whether on the football field or basketball or whatever it was, sport they, they were playing. Well, in Hebrews 11, we read of men who have stepped into the Hall of Faith. We read of men and women who did extraordinary things through faith. Ordinary men and women who stepped into their God-given dreams and into their God-given destiny because they walked by faith. Even when their sight often told them otherwise, they all took their next step in faith. Let me read a passage from there to you here in verse 32 through 34. Listen to what it says. He says, how much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jebethal, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. Watch this next line. By faith, somebody say by faith. These people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. How did they receive what God had promised them? By faith. And it says they shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Watch this next part. Their weakness was turned to strength. How? By faith. My friends, whenever you find yourself weak, Whenever you find yourself fatigued and you feel like throwing in the towel, whether it's in your relationship, whether it's in your battle with your health, whether it's the journey that you're on where, where maybe old habits are pulling you back and, and temptation keeps calling your name. Whenever you find your place in a weakness, there is a way to replace that weakness with strength. And the way is by faith. In that weakness, you don't look with your eyes. You look with your eyes of faith within you. And you look to God to regain that strength. Look at this next part. It says they became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. How? By faith. If you ever find yourself in a difficult struggle, you're having a hard time at work, Maybe you've got some opposition coming against you. You've got some critics coming against you. You've got some haters hating on you, trying to keep you down. Maybe there's a struggle that you're facing. How can you overcome that struggle? How can you overcome those battles? By faith. By faith, you can have the victory. You know, my friends, I believe that in heaven, this chapter will continue with the, the names of many other people who lived by faith. People like you and me. People who have chosen to live differently than the rest of the world. People who have chosen to live by faith and not by sight. I don't know about you, but I would like my name written on that list in the book of heaven. How about you? Again, my friends, what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that faith is enough. I'm trying to tell you that faith is enough to help you take the next step. Faith will help you to move from where you are to where you need to be tomorrow. If you're going through a difficult time right now, know that your faith is enough to get you through that difficult time. Your faith is enough. One of the real life stories that we, that we heard about as a result of the Hurricane Harvey storm in Houston was that of Job Gonzalez and his family. Job Gonzalez is a, is a native of the Rio Grande Valley, uh, but today he is a worship leader at Lakewood Church in Houston. Well, his home was one of the homes that was damaged during the floodwaters of Hurricane Harvey. 
And earlier this week, he went on Facebook and he posted a short little video. And in that video, several family members and friends had gathered at his house and, and they were tearing down walls and taking out all the damaged furniture and all the stuff that had been, you know, uh, just damaged in his home. And, and they were taking it out in wheelbarrows out of his house. But one of the unique things that, that you and I saw, that I saw in that video, was multiple times in that video, this is what he said. He says, God is good and he is faithful. Do you know what he was saying, my friends? In essence, he was saying our faith in God is going to help us to get through this very hard time. Our faith in God is going to help us to take our next step. My friends, what I'm trying to tell you is that your faith is enough. The Bible says that God has given all of us a measure of faith, that we all have faith. You have this unstoppable faith within you. Jesus said one time, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, it is enough faith. Do you know that your faith can shake the heavens and change the earth? That's what your faith can do. And so if you have faith, you're going to be okay. You're going to make it, and you're going to be able to take your next step. I know many of you recently, maybe your kids have gone back to school. Maybe you're feeling a little anxious about it. Maybe some of you, your, your children have gone off to college, and, and you have some thoughts of worry and fear now that they're on their own. Can I tell you something? Your faith is enough. Your faith is enough to give you the strength and the peace that you need in this new season of your life. Maybe some of you have just started a new job. Or maybe you've entered into a new school. Your faith is enough in this new beginning in transition of your life. Maybe for some of you, business has been a little slow over the summer. Can I encourage you with something? Just wake up every morning. Thank God for another day and take your next step. Take your next step. You and I do what we can, and we have faith in God to do what we can't. You know, it's the same approach that we have taken to this move with one church in two locations. There's a lot of, there was a, there's been a lot of questions that I'm sure we've had and people have had. And, and like I tell you, you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're walking by faith. We know we serve a big God. We know we serve a God that is able to do far more than we ask, think, or even imagine. But he has called us to live by faith. Listen to what the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. As I get ready to close here today. And it says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. My friend's faith. Is, a, is the foundation of our relationship with God. He rewards those who follow him and who live by faith. So wherever you find yourself today, know that you have an unstoppable faith within you. Don't worry so much about the next five years or about the next 10 years. Just take your next step. Keep your eyes on God. Keep the faith and know that your faith is enough to take the next step. Your faith is enough to get you from here to where you need to be. Do you guys receive that with me this afternoon? And so let's take a moment and let's call upon God. Because I don't know where some of you are here today. But I can tell you this, that our faith in Christ creates a new beginning in our life. Our faith in Christ is what gives us a relationship with God. Our faith in Christ is what brings healing to your life. Wherever you've been hurt, wherever you've been disappointed in your past, Jesus can heal you of that by faith. Jesus, through Christ, through faith in Christ, you can be forgiven of your sins, of your past, and you can step into a new day, a new beginning. 
that it all begins with a step of faith. Remember, Jesus came to this earth. 2,000 years ago, he shed his blood. He died on the cross. And on the third day, he was raised again. When you and I place our faith upon his work, the Bible says we are forgiven of our sins. We receive a new beginning, a new life. And we step into a new season of our journey of faith with God. God says to you, my plans for you are good, but to give you hope and to give you a future. If you want that good future, my friends, it begins with a commitment of faith to Christ. Can we take a, a, a moment to pray a prayer right now? Right where you are, just close your eyes and bow your heads with me. If that's you today, my friend, maybe you're here, maybe the... Maybe you've been distant from God. I can assure you right now, God is knocking on the door of your heart. He ain't saying, he's not saying to you, you need to go change your life and then come to me. Go make all your wrongs right and then come to me. He's saying, come to me just as you are. And then I'm going to help you take the next step. And so if you're here today and you want to receive God's forgiveness for your sins, for your past. You want to receive this new life by accepting Christ in faith. Right where you're at, as a sign of him to God, as a sign of faith to the Lord. Will you lift up your hand to the Lord? All across the room, lift up your hand as a sign of faith to God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my friend. God sees you. God sees you. God sees you. You can put your hands down. Now let's pray this prayer of faith together. That's you. Just to everybody, just say this with me. Say, Lord God, I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins, and I receive new life. Jesus. I receive you as my Savior and as my Lord. Today, I commit my life to you. Now help me to take my next step in faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, church. Put your hands together.